we're here with Chris, and uh, Chris, you just came out with a brand new book. I did. Called Purity. You excited about that? Yep. The Moral Revolution. Come on. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, we got a lot of questions about the book, so Good. I figured we'd focus today on uh, some purity questions. <laughs> I'm pure. There it is right there. There we go. Okay. That's a good start. There. <laughs> so um, this first one's from Rex. Okay. And he said he just listened to your sermon on sexual purity. Uh, he was going to get your book soon. And he just had one question for you. How does a teenager control those sexual urges until he is married? Specifically with all the other sexual distractions that take place on a daily basis right in front of them. Yeah, you know, we, lived in one, we live in one of the most sexually charged cultures in history, don't we? Yeah. With the advent of television and internet and, you know, um, it's, it's our, our culture is like really charged. I think there's a few things to remember. First of all, when God said, be fruitful and multiply, he's the one who gave us a sex drive. So I think it's important for us to realize that God initiated the sex drive. And then he said in Genesis 1, after he created and we said, be fruitful, multiply, and he created, you know, all the animals created us. And, but, but along in there with that statement, be fruitful, multiply, he, he ends this, but it says that God saw that he, he looked at everything he created and he said it was very good. Right. Uh, and God cr included in that, be fruitful, multiply. That, mm -hmm. I guess it's important for us to realize, like, the, the drive that we have um, to, to procreate, the drive, that sex drive that we have to procreate, that's a God-given thing, right? Just like, just like the ability to, you know, the the hunger we have for food, or, you know, um, the need we have for love, or you know, those things are they're God-given. Right. So, you know, we're we're not trying to get rid of our sex drive, unlike you know much of the church's ideas, like, well, you know, you you're supposed to pretend it isn't really happening, or you're supposed to feel bad that it's happening to you. You know, it's normal for uh, an unmarried man. To want to have sex with a, a woman, right. you know, it's normal for a married man to want to have sex with his wife too. But you know what I'm saying? Totally. It's totally Everybody. normal to to want to have sex with the opposite sex. Right. Like that's there's nothing wrong with that. Our what what we need to do is manage that. So we're not managing it like we're trying to get rid of it. We're managing it like we're containing it inside the walls that God's given us. Like, and and God wants sex to come through covenant. And, you know, we've talked, it's in the book, in the purity book, I talk a lot about covenant. What's the difference between covenant and cohabiting? We'll probably have some of the questions like that. But, you know, God gave a woman a hymen, uh, that sack of blood, that so that the covenant can be consummated before the children are conceived. Right. God wanted children to come out of covenant. Wow. So the goal isn't to manage our sex drive down to nothing or to pretend like it's not really happening. The goal is to take our sex drive and to get it under the control of the Holy Spirit. You know, Galatians 5 says that self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Right. I need the Holy Spirit just to control myself. Hmm. And so, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to control inside the values of the